Hello, um, this is the digital experience team. Um, this is our sprint release video for uh, sprint ending March 26, 2021. Um, I'll go first. Um, I've released some CMS templates for um, the uh, GitLab events. Uh, we use commit as a use case. Um, I'm not sharing, somebody else is screen sharing, screen sharing. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so these are, um, so these, this is a Figma file with uh, different blocks that can be assembled to create uh, the events template. So the events template will be um, held in one mother template and we can use that template to create all of the different stages of the events. Uh, this issue is in review and going into design. Uh, also for my sprint release, uh, I worked on some blog um, issues. Um, I created some thumb thumbnail issue, some th th thumbnail images for the blog homepage. I also created um, in-body CTA block um, for uh, cross blog promotions. Um, this has uh, also been closed now um, past review. So this is an issue for engineering. And lastly, I collected, uh, with the help of Shane, some heat mapping for the top five pages funnel funneling traffic to the free trial. This is part of an OKR. Um, and uh, for the next sprint, I'll be taking a look at the, the results of these uh, heat maps and uh, making some recommendations for UX improvement. There we go. Um, next is Lauren. All right. So we executed the uh, brand messaging, top 10 pages epic. Um, so we updated all those pages with the new brand message. Um, I did that with Val, super exciting. Went really smooth. Um, moving on, we, um, I update or added some slippers blog components to the repo, the blog header um, and the tags component, we will be adding the breadcrumbs component shortly, like the end of today. Um, also updated um, our type form handbook updates. So back on our um, Netlify CMS landing page. And then I also added instructions um, elsewhere in the handbook on how to use type form. Um, we have a MR that's in flight right now where we're launching a new pricing calculator on the website. Super exciting. That's kind of been um, in progress for about like a half a year. So exciting to see that go live. Um, big update. That was really the entire digital experience team was uh, making our new blog post template live. And we have a follow up epic, um, which was a team effort. Everyone taking a look and saying, hey, we got to fix this. We got to fix that. We got to do this. Look at all those beautiful issues we have, and we're going to be busting those out over the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you see something, we've got an epic for you to add an issue to. And Tyler, who is not here, I'll move on. Um, he uh, fixed some issues we had with duplicating styles um, on our blog template. He also came up with a great um solution to our slippers conflicting styles with our website styles using a shadow dom which is actually really really cool and it works so sweet and it's live now um and he also added a bunch more blog components like the image gallery pull quote banner sidebar blog feature image and the anchor link with arrow um so that wraps it up over to Jess. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I just got one thing for you guys today, which is the navigation design for both desktop and mobile. Um, if you can open the Figma file and see the designs. Um, I've had a lot of back and forth, different changes since we did the research. So hopefully this is good to go. There might be iterations after this, seeing how things work in the real world. Um, and a little bit of work on the search uh, as well. And there's also, if you go to the tab on the left, you can go to mobile. Let's take a quick look at those. Yep. And that's pretty much it for me. I think Laura was next. 
Uh, yeah, so I uh, made a few updates to slippers. We now have um, form fields. Uh, so these are like your traditional input fields, which are, uh, you can play around with them there. Uh, there will be some updates uh, with these, but yeah, there are controls um, <laughs> that lets you change with what the placeholder text says or what the label text says, and will update uh, the styles based on what state the form input is in. Um, and those controls are also available uh, to the checkbox and radio, uh, which they weren't before. Um, so some improvements to form fields all around. Hopefully they'll play nicely with some of our existing form uh, external vendors that we have on the site. Uh, this one is uh, tooltips coming, coming in hot. Um, there will be some improvements for tooltips showing above or left or right. Uh, but beyond that, those are happening. Um, and uh, I also, oh, I made some improvements to our default um, viewports. And then this commit page is, uh, we had had some commit meetings uh, for the upcoming commit event, the 2021 event uh, for the new template that we're building. Um, and what came out of that meeting was we might want to link to last year's event at some point, which was problematic because I had changed all of that. I had just updated last year's um, files to be this year's dates. Um, so I went back and uh, kind of cherry picked those commits and, and preserved that page. So that existing last year's website will always be available um, at the commit slash 2020 URL. Uh, so that's safe. Once again, it's been reinstated. And up next is Javi. Hi, everybody. Um, I finally got this page out, which is wonderful. It's using our buttons, our buttons can't speak cards. Um, and it took forever um, for various reasons, one of which is like the Shadow Dom was like something that was I was getting holed up by, but uh, good stuff there. Um, this is just me doing me things. I found like a thing that lets us view our configuration file um, of Tailwind um, for our repo. And so then this is like the actual project itself. It was super simple to set up. Um, it's nice. I like it. I think it'll help us with the developer experience. Worked on footer, um, using slippers, try to get it to work. I realized that I might have not used Shadow DOM, which is, explains why I probably have a ton of conflicts. So i um, going to use that for that footer. Um, and I'm looking to make a layout um, for it, essentially. So we have like one layout um, in middleman that's just like all slippers. Um, and I think that will like play nicely with the work of like wanting to get like a header in there as well, um, which is what like the navigation that Jess has worked on. I have some stuff about like stuff that's just been super work in progress. Um, I just wanted to call out this one thing in particular where it's like, um, if no one else has any like comments on this, I'm just gonna make an MR and tag Tyler for it. And that's like, yeah, that's fine. Um, one other thing that I want to work on um, in the next day or two, or at least like try to see if we can make any headway is to just like essentially like use the, the different Tailwind at apply directives uh, that exist um, and trying to get those to work within like the view components themselves. People have been asking for them. Laura asked for them. Tyler has asked for them. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get those in there. Um, and it helps with like keeping all of our code consistent, helps with like reusing Tailwind as much as we can. And so that's all it for me. Um, I see that Brandon <laughs> saw his tooltip show up, so I don't know if he's here. Um, yep. Sorry, I popped in at the, I, I came in late, but um, yeah. So there's timing. not too much to see here uh, visually, um, but the pricing page is going through another test iteration and it's basically comparing, uh, you know, what the, we're trying to learn if the view more toggle on the uh, plan matrix at the top, uh, because about half the people were clicking on it previously. We want to learn if it's beneficial to just leave it always open, if that impacts conversion or not. So that's what we're testing now. Uh, and that's live as of yesterday afternoon. Um, so yeah, more to learn from that uh, coming up soon. And that's it for me. It looks like uh, Steven, but uh, yeah, he's here. I am indeed. Um, may I share my screen? Sorry, Javi, got to bump you off. Thank you. So added uh, labels to the spacing in Figma, which may sound simple, but here we are. So when you drag them in, you can see actually what size they are, as opposed to trying to guess what they are from some color code, which makes no sense. Um, small changes. 
Uh, I've added, I've provided an update on this OKR uh, feature description page. It's got some metrics that we've pulled from the current state um, for ahead of a kickoff meeting next week. So feel free to go in and have a look there. And documentation. Um, oh, God damn you, Zoom. Sorry, the Zoom menu has covered my screen. There we go. I've made a start on some documentation here. Some of it's quite high level as to what exactly Slippers is. And some of it gets a little bit into the weeds around typography, color, and spacing, um, and so on. This is a big work in progress. I'll be looking to get everybody's eyes on this at some stage. Give me some help, please, on this. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all. I don't know who's next. I don't think anyone's next. I think that's it. All right. Thank you for watching today. We'll see you in two weeks.